Hi, I'm Louise. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm an educator at the California Academy of Sciences. Today, we're going to be creating a swamp in a bottle to see for ourselves how the natural materials in a wetland can help clean the water flowing through it. You can find the written instructions for this activity along with this video. First, we'll collect some material to act as our swamp, and then my friend Laura will walk us through filtering the water. Let's go. You can look for natural materials in a backyard, park, or even on the sidewalk. Try not to disturb live plants and animals and be sure to take only what you need. Now that we've gathered our natural materials and built the layers of our swamp, it's time to put it to the test and see how well it filters out water. So you're going to take your muddy water right here that you've created and we are going to start pouring it into our swamp to let it go through the layers. Make sure you keep a little bit of your muddy water to ensure that you can compare it to whatever is filtered out. Here we go. While we wait for our swamp to filter, let's talk a little bit about the swamp habitat. Has anyone ever been to a swamp before or maybe even lived near a type of wetland? Wetlands are really important because they provide a great amount of services, not only to the plants and animals that live in that habitat, but even us as humans. Of course, they filter out water like we are experimenting with right here but they also oxygenate water and act as storm barriers so that if there's say a hurricane that comes towards the coast, it will break up the force of that storm and more inland areas, whether it be farmland, agriculture, or even urban cities where some of us might live are less damaged and are able to withstand the aftermath of a storm. But not only are they beneficial to humans, but as I mentioned before, there are a lot of different types and plants and animals that call swamps home. You may have noticed that we have gathered a lot of different things. We have dirt, we have rocks, we have plants, but are they the same types of plants or even the same kind of dirt that you would find in a swamp? And if you were to use the same types of things that would be found in the swamp, would it filter out the same way? Hmm, very interesting to think about. What about the animals that live there? Can you think of any animals that you might find in a swamp? I can definitely think of one. If you visited us here at the Academy, you've probably seen our American alligator, Claude. Of course, this is not Claude himself, but of course, it's always good to see a familiar face. What else could you find in a swamp? Maybe some insects, um, moths flying around, ants crawling on the ground, maybe even animals that live in the layers of the swamp itself as water is filtering through. Perhaps a snake coming down from the top of a tree? You never know, there's a lot of things to encounter. All right, it looks like our swamp is filtering pretty well. Do you think it's time to do a comparison? I think so too. All right, let me get a little bit closer to everybody and we'll do a comparison of our filtered water next to our muddy water. So let's see here. This is our filtered and this is our muddy. Do you think our swamp did a good job of filtering out this water, making sure it's a little bit cleaner? I believe so. Do you think if we filtered this water here back through, it would take out even more dirt? Perhaps, maybe that's something that you can try at home with your swamp. 
All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Swamp in the Bottle activity. Of course, check out different types of swamps, learn more about them, find out if there's different wetlands around you and figure out how humans are using them to help make our lives easier and ensure the health and safety of all of the other living life that can be found in those habitats. Have a good day, everyone.